So it can be a lot to process and think about. And this is such a huge decision for people. You've put so much sweat and tears, hopefully not blood, into your business. Where do you actually go to list it? Now, Ryan, I know that you work for Quiet Light, but one of the things I appreciate about you is I feel like you can give a, a pretty good unbiased perspective on this because you have sold businesses yourself. I'm sure you've sold some that didn't go through Quiet Light. Like, what do you think of, how do you approach this process? What do you want to say to people that are in this point of the journey of selling their FBA business? So, so first of all, I, I do love this topic. And I've actually, um, I bought a business through Quiet Light about five years ago, which is how I got introduced to Quiet Light, you know, joined the team and everything. And I bought businesses through all the brokerages. I'm very familiar with all of them. I've also sold businesses direct. I've sold businesses on my own. I've sold businesses with brokers. So I, I've sort of done it uh, all over the place, right? But what's critical here is you need to explore your options. Like you were saying, Eric, there are lots of options. You need to see who you jive with. You need to see who has experience in your business, your niche, your size of business, um, in which company and their type of listing a business makes sense and fits your needs, right? And if you're selling an FBA business, you want to find someone, of course, who understands Amazon, the lingo, and you know, all the different moving pieces with Amazon. You'll find that you'll hit it off with some advisors, you'll hit it off at some marketplaces, and you won't with others. That's okay. This mm -hmm. is a massive decision for you. It has lasting impacts on your net worth, financial freedom, and future opportunities. And like you're saying, Eric, like you've put a lot of time and energy and life into this business. You don't want to shortchange yourself or, or do something wrong there. Um, let me just talk a little bit about some of the, the different options that you have. When you think about like a marketplace, right? This is more of a yeah. do-it-yourself type model. It's great if you're comfortable there, but selling a business can be very unique. Uh, most marketplaces are typically for smaller deal sizes where it's a, a very transactional approach. Um, a lot of the marketplaces are going to be more high volume versus, you know, boutique type brokerages that are going to, you know, take can the I, top of the, yeah. Can I cut into like, when you say like a smaller transaction, what are you thinking of? Um, usually about uh, probably sub 150,000, sub 100,000. Okay. All right. Um, and you, you'd also mentioned something about direct too. And as, as we talk about, uh, direct offering. This is a very common space, especially with 2020, 2021, early 2022. A lot of money has been raised. A lot of aggregators reached out direct to you. You probably get those emails and those texts. I haven't had an Amazon FBA business in, in two years, uh, actually three years now. And I still get those texts for direct offers and you know looking to buy my business, right? Um, selling your business direct can be done. I've seen it done successfully, but it's also very tricky. And it's hard to right. know whether you're getting a world-class offer, just an awesome offer, because how do you know if it is or not, right? When you do get yeah. those direct offers, I highly recommend connecting with someone who does know the space and at least help you get direct in the right, put you in the right direction. Um, right. I always say it's like you probably wouldn't sell your house to some random person who knocked on your front door, right? Like, you know, and, and businesses are significantly more complicated than when it comes to houses. So, okay. um I do have a question. So like, I know I brought this up on previous videos because this is part of a playlist, the series. I recommend people to watch this entire thing all the way through because again, you want to get the best multiple. You want to do what's best for you based on all the effort and uh, energy that you've put into this FBA business. Um, at QuietLight, you guys have a free valuation form, which I'll link to in the description and I'll put a little pop-up call out on the screen. Um, when people do that, like what's the expectation there? Like how long does it take to get that valuation for you, um, from QuietLight typically? And um, what's that process look like? Yeah, so there are some automated tools that, that can be done. You can get that immediate feedback right there. But honestly, there's so many moving pieces when it comes to uh, evaluation within a business that it's mm -hmm. um, usually we'll jump on a call within the next couple of days, you know, that day or within three days or something. And we can take, you know, 25 to 45 minutes dive into your business, understand the nuances and the growth that are going to happen right. with that. Right. And that's a That's right. a critical piece because. Um, you can't just plug something into an algorithm like a business. There's so many moving pieces. Someone might have fantastic numbers, but they're selling fidget spinners, right? I know that's an yeah. example that's been played out, but you know, an yeah. algorithm isn't going to be able to pick up on that, right? Um, yep. What I would say is like when, you, when you're working or what you're looking for in an advisor, right? You want to find someone who's knowledgeable in the space, who's got experience in the space, um, someone who's responsive that can match your, your candor, who, who you like to work with. Do you jive with them? Do you get along with them? You're going to be spending a lot of time on Zoom with them over the next you know few months potentially. And um, mm -hmm. you know sometimes sales can, you know, I, I've worked with buyers for over a year before we started to list their business because they were working to fix several things within there, right? So this is a, a long-term play in a relationship. And I consider everybody I've ever worked with uh, to be friends of mine on both sides of the table, buyers and sellers. Um, if you do have an Amazon FBA business, I would probably not recommend going with a local business broker. It's not because they're not good. They just lack the online and FBA experience yeah. to know basic terms like tacos or FBM, right? Um, in 
I don't want my, you know, a uh, family law attorney doing your estate necessarily or something. You know, there's very yeah. nuanced stuff for everything. It's just, yeah, get a specialist. Yeah, your divorce attorney brother probably shouldn't be putting together your will, right? They're just yeah, yeah, skill yeah. sets, and, and that's okay, right? It's not that, you know, one yep. is bad. It's just in a, in a different category. So, mm -hmm. um, and I always say, like, at the end of the day, see what, see what your options out there. Talk to lots of different people, um, especially – you know, even if you're trying to sell very quickly, right, then it's even more important to understand who you're working with. And at the end of the day, like I have been a part of lots of exits on both sides of the table as a buyer, a seller, as a broker. I love to see exits done. I'm always happy to be a sounding board. If you've got a certain deal in hand and you just want to second eyes on deal structure, I see a lot of deal structures every day and I can just say, hey, you know, I would change this. I would change that, you know. Um, if you get a great offer, I'll be the first to say that is an awesome offer. You should definitely take that based on what's happening in the market. Run for the hills. This is an awesome offer. And at the same yeah. time, I'll say, hey, they, you know, that direct offer is not very good. And just to give you a quick example, I was working with a seller who in, in uh, May of this year who had a couple direct offers, and they were very low multiples. And we ended up getting, um, let's see, eight offers on his business and uh, almost three times as much as the highest offer he got direct. Right. So wow. these are yeah. these are pretty big numbers. Oh, um, I'm sure the direct too. you get a lot of that where it's just like low balling and they're just mass emailing and mass outreach for it. Just hoping they get a, somebody who's, you know, same as if like somebody does a cash offer on your house. It's probably not the best number you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. And if you just like I need out today and first guy yeah. there with cash, like, OK, you know, that that's a different path to go down. But this is something you do want to take your time. You want to see explore the options that are out there and, and happy to help in any way I can. No strings attached. I'd love to see deals done and happy to help however I can. So Ryan, we had talked earlier about like maybe around $150,000 or less, you might want to go with an online listing service. Uh, but what about like if you're getting north of that? Because obviously there's a big difference between a $300,000 business, a $3 million business and a $30 million business. Like how do you think about that for people who have these types of businesses? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and, and there's a certain point where it, it, it's almost like you know, any, anything that, any one thing that you're selling, the larger the transaction, the more complicated it's going to be. People do a ton of research to buy a car, but you know, if I'm going to go buy, you know, milk at the grocery store, I don't even think twice, right? It could be, yep. you know, 50 cents more expensive, but I'm not going to drive to another grocery store. So the larger the sale, larger the purchase, there's a lot more that's going to go into it. As you get into $5 million deals, 10, 15, $20 million deals, the complexity gets that much more. The deal structure gets a lot more complicated as you're dealing with, you know, earnouts and, uh, and holdbacks and all those things that we'll get to in the next episode. But as you think about um, who you need in your corner, it's critical and more important that you've got the right team there because the percentages and the numbers can swing pretty heavily. And the, the other thing that's also important when you're working with a with an MA advisor they're going to help you dial in that true sde number that true profit number seller's discretionary earnings because at, at the end of the day like if a direct buyer comes to you and says hey you, you did a hundred thousand in profit well they're not going to tell you if you're like oh but they, you forgot to add in this fifty thousand dollars of like one-time expenses or your yeah. salary and all these other things and all of a sudden you're like well i got this amazing multiple if the, if the sde number is off then it doesn't matter what you're multiplying it by because it's still wrong so that's a critical piece too is as the numbers get bigger and you get into the 15, $20 million deals, you might have a 10% increase on your, your, your EBITDA, your seller discretion, your earnings. And that can lead to millions of dollars on the back end of your exit. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's such a great example of how getting an advisor involved is going to be able to kind of dig out those little hidden pockets where there might be money that's going to increase that final multiple. So in the next video, what we want to talk about is Amazon FBA finance options for buying or selling. So this is going to be really important because it's going to help the seller understand what's going on in the other end of the table, why things might be taking longer, but also knowing what the benefits, pros and cons are of these options. So we're going to catch you in the next video.